video so today's video is a, a commentary video of sorts and it's about drones road versus the internet drones road versus the internet it has caused a stir let me tell you guys so drones road is actually bobby brown's new brand so bobby brown is someone behind the bobby brown brand but that was then sold to estee lauder she had a non-exclusive no she had an exclusivity deal for i believe five years so after leaving bobby brown she was allowed to create a new brand but she couldn't call it bobby brown because bobby brown obviously already exists so she then called it jones road and we're going to talk about the recent scandal around that brand mainly on tiktok now before we do any of that subscribe to that bell like comment for engagement it really helps to push my videos out so please like please comment it takes two seconds but it helps the algorithm figure out if you're interested or not jones road is a like a natural makeup that enhances beauty kind of brand like it's tints balms lip balms lip tints very natural stuff it's supposed to just basically enhance not cover up i like that makeup sometimes sometimes i like to do a full beat sometimes i like to do even more full beat uh, my oils are seeping through so this was actually a matte makeup look but i did that on purpose because my oils the way my oils seep through is crazy so i like to <laughs> powder down my skin swings so heavily like sometimes i'll be loving a foundation i'll be recommending it to you guys every day and then my skin all of a sudden does a 180 where it just completely changes from either just super super oily to now excruciatingly dry and now every makeup that i've used needs to be changed my whole routine needs to adjust and now i need to wear oily makeup because my skin is dry it's flaking it is disgusting so i can't even i struggle recommending products because it sounds like i'm flip-flopping but it's really just my skin flip-flopping so then i have to adjust my whole routine change everything it's so difficult to do project pans as well because I'll be panning like a certain foundation or a certain routine and then I have to change that whole routine. So I essentially have to do two project pans in a year, just depending on where my skin swings. Right now, it's oily. I'm essentially baking right now and setting my whole face with like three separate powders and putting on a long wearing setting spray for my skin to then look like this. I actually love it. I kind of, I like when my skin is at this point because I think it's so much easier to do, to deal with this than it is to deal with dryness. I don't know why I ended up going on a bit of a tangent here about my skin. Now that you know all of that, it's a natural makeup brand. It is almost Glossier. It is Milk. It is, you know, all those brands that do natural, low maintenance, natural, oily makeup. Do not set with powder, natural, oily, low pigmentation. Use a tiny bit of it. So now that you know that context, let's get into the drama. TikTok has started to try out the What The Foundation, which is a new foundation balm that Jones Road has released. And it is low coverage, very, very, very sheer. Um, it's a balm, it's oil-based. Let me emphasize it's oil-based. It's an oil formula. Oil formula, I'll get into that in a minute. And yeah, that's it, it's a balm. It's supposed to work kind of like the Glossier skin tint, except it's oil-based and it's a balm. Uh, skin tint is runny. I'm a, I think it's water-based. As someone who's a beauty influencer, you can either take it the casual route where you're not really making many recommendations you're not really doing reviews you're more just being like i like using this right now that's it you're not really ruining or damaging a brand you're just being like i like this i don't like this for my own personal preferences perfectly fine but if you start being like this expert on things but you're actually getting things wrong and then that's influencing someone's sales i think that's kind of unfair sometimes i think everything has to be prefaced with this is not for me this is for someone else yada yada, yada. now there is this tiktoker called meredith so she's a TikToker who slathers foundation on her face. S slathers like peanut butter. And a lot of people, like the peanut butter baby, that was the reference. I just said like peanut butter as if people slather peanut butter on their face. I don't think that happens. It's like the peanut butter baby. That's what she looks like. Obviously the makeup in the end ends up looking really good. But one, you're in front of a ring light. Like my makeup looks really good right now. And I would say it looks pretty decent in person as well. But there are obviously a lot more pores visible in person. I'm looking in the mirror. Creases, etc. that you can't see on camera. Like, it's always so difficult to be like, this foundation is so ugly. Unless you show it in natural lighting, no one's going to see anything. Because I used to be like, oh my god, my foundation looks so bad. And you guys were like, no, it looks so good. It's because of the ring light. It, like, blurs everything. So, you see, if you're filming TikToks with a ring light, with a good camera, with maybe some beauty filters, some blurring, everything's going to look good. But people have then started copying the slathering face just to see how it looks in person and it looks awful and my theory is well one that she does that for attention she knows that gives her outrage marketing which outrage marketing and tiktok go hand in hand that's literally it it's like back in the day instagram outrage marketing and instagram went hand in hand i think it's a short-lived fame in my opinion because it was short-lived on instagram and it's now short-lived on tiktok i believe but i don't know i think outrage marketing works for a certain amount of time and then after that if you don't have the personality to back it up 
people just don't care so she does the slathering face now in my opinion she either removes some of the volume of makeup in between shots and that's why it looks so good later on or she just quite simply you know the ring light the beauty light she films the video it looks good on camera and then she removes it before she leaves the house that is my opinion i don't know what she actually does and if she likes the way it looks perfect she could just fully well really like the way it looks but i don't think it's sustainable to do your makeup like that i just think it's wasteful as well just as a whole it's just not for me personally but for her but clearly she likes full glam makeup that is what we've established she never really does natural makeup unless people demand it then she'll do like one every now and then but you can tell that she's a full glam girly she loves full glam that is her shtick so tell me why she would review the what the foundation went to it's a foundation balm it's a skin tint it's almost it's giving me the same vibes as when glossy first entered the scene as i'm wearing a glossy hoodie i love this one it's the lavender one it's for their lavender lip balm and then she invited me and they gave me this for free she really like um i also have all the other colors i have the white one with the little dots on it i have the uh pink one i have the sweatshirts as well they're very comfortable i work with glossy if you guys don't know i think that's a well-known fact so if you want to get anything for 10 percent off it will be a description but i do make a dis uh, i do make a commission so just now that you're aware of it but it's so cute i love it when glossy first entered the scene there were a lot of people who like natural makeup that reviewed it and were like oh my god love some people though were used to doing a full face of makeup they would go on the website of glossier see very natural looking makeup like borderline no makeup makeup buy it and then act like they were deceived by glossy like they would put it on and be like oh my god where's the coverage you were not deceived you went on the website you saw that it was no coverage you bought it fully well knowing you're a full glam person and then you complained about not being full glam and that's what i have a problem with if something is marketed a certain way and it performs that way you cannot call them out for deceiving and cannot call it out for being a bad product because it's simply just not a product for you and what happened to glossier back then is what i see happening to jones road now whether it's a good product or not is one thing but if you know that you like full glam and you're reviewing it as a full glam lover and you're being like well it doesn't have enough coverage I have a problem with that. I really do. I'm going to make a lot of complaints here. One, she's a full glam girly. She used a, a tint and she grabbed the same amount as she would with a regular foundation. Um, you're probably asking me, Meredith, what is this? Well, to be honest, I'm not really sure, but we're going to find out. So Jones Road came out with this and it's called What the Foundation? I think that's a fair name. The hair's got to go up for this bad boy. I'm excited. I got two shades, light and porcelain. You know me and my hands, so let's just go right in. It smells very strong, let's apply. I mean, I am the foundation queen, so... I'm not sure what to make of this consistency. My hands can't, um, what's going on here? You guys, I'm really trying. It's gonna be a no for me. I really wanted to like this though. Not regular foundation, like the way she does her regular foundation routine, which is way too much. Uh, Jones Road recommends doing half of the spatula and then adding tiny bits more if you feel like you need it. So she slathers it on and it's not rubbing in, right? Mm -hmm. It's not rubbing in. So she takes a sponge, a wet beauty blender. What did I say when I was saying what this foundation is? I said it's an oil-based formula. What does it mix? Oil and water. I remember learning this in science as if it was yesterday i see my vividly if i close my eyes i see my teacher standing in front of the classroom being like water and oil doesn't mix so you need emulsifiers i don't believe a beauty blender is an emulsifier so you're taking a wet sponge with water on it mm -hmm. what's on it and in it it's like an oil-based foundation you're dabbing the sponge on the oil-based foundation you're wondering why it's coming off is it maybe because water and oil don't mix maybe you should have used a dry brush maybe that would have worked a bit better or maybe you should have just taken a tap i just feel like you should have read the instructions and followed them and then made an executive decision whether you like it or not so she then tries it again after getting a lot of backlash quite a bit of you had a lot to say about my last review i'm all about second chances though so let's give it another shot i was feeling a full glam moment yesterday but i guess this is a tinted bomb here she is we're going in with a tiny bit okay let's buff this out i really don't see anything let's go in with more this is the side with and this is without to be honest i really don't even see a slight difference 
The smell is also very overpowering. Do you guys see a difference? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. It looks great. She applies it the way it's supposed to be applied. It looks great. And she still says, no, I hate it. <sighs> okay. Those two videos are actually her most viewed videos in months. Her views now sit on around like, 4 million ish which is still a lot of views don't get me wrong but she used to get a lot more views then like it kind of died down because obviously everyone was over the shtick of like okay you slap on foundation what else so she started doing actual like voiced reviews because back in the day it was just to music but then she started like actually integrating her personality in there which you can tell she's trying to move away from outrage marketing into like i have a personality too just in case tiktok dies so that she can move to a different platform aka youtube which is what happened to instagram back in the day i already made a video on this if you want to watch it, it'll be in the description or on the end card. I already talked about how TikTok is just a deja vu of Instagram and that inevitably people are going to go from TikTok to YouTube because it's not sustainable to do outreach marketing forever, in my opinion. So she moved to doing her personality. Those two are the most viewed videos that she has on TikTok in months. Now, you would think that that's where the situation ends. No, but there are other TikTokers like Michaela who agreed with Meredith and gave it a bad review too, but at least she actually used it the way it was supposed to be used there are a lot of people who used it the way it was supposed to be used and had varying opinions that is not my problem i think you can still dislike it you can still dislike it if you use it correctly and you say that you say i used it correctly i'm usually a full glam person i don't really like the way this sits on my face this doesn't really mesh well with my skin texture if you give objective reviews wonderful but if you're like i'm i'm a slather foundation on my face kind of girly and i hate this because it's natural I just, there's something about that just irks me. So what happened? Bobby Brown posts a video herself, a TikTok, shading Meredith. So I always love learning new makeup techniques and I learned one today. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try. Hmm. Hmm. Didn't really work. <laughs> and the internet breaks. And by the internet, I mean TikTok. It breaks. Every single video on my For You page was about this drama. So everyone is siding with Bobby Brown, even if, like, even if they understand, because a lot of people understand that you can dislike the foundation. You can dislike it. Like, I could have bought it and hated it, but at least I know that I would have used it correctly and said, hey, I used it correctly. I like both natural makeup and full glam makeup. This simply just doesn't sit well on my face. Try it out if you have different skin texture to me. Because if I have oily skin, I'm probably not going to like an oil-based foundation. Like, I probably will not. But if I was in my dry skin era, this might be my favorite foundation of all time. But once you address that, you say, look, I have oily skin. This is really isn't just for me. Or I have dry skin. This really helps to minimize my dry dryness. Like, just objective, valid. This is why I don't really like outrage marketing. Because when you're so busy outraging, you're not busy enough explaining. And I feel like there, there, there is a lot of explaining to do with foundation and makeup that just isn't being done right now on tiktok oh i'm sure it's being done but it's just not being done by the biggest tiktokers because they blew up on outreach marketing whereas the smaller reviewers are actually reviewing really well but they're just not blowing up because of that lack of outrage does that make sense now there was another tiktok that popped up on my for you page that kind of made me side eye bobby brown a little bit because even though i agree with everything i just said to you guys right i'm getting so oily everything i just said i agree with now let's draw the line here that's one storyline here comes FTC guidelines, which I've been a big fan of recently talking about, including this video. When you purchased the What The Foundation, at the end, it would tell you to post a review on TikTok and you would get $100 per X amount of views or a dollar per X amount of views, whatever it was. Y'all wanna know why Jones Road Foundation is going so viral here on TikTok? This is why. And I could have lied to you and said I loved it and talked about how awesome it was to get paid, but I didn't. As you can see, it's saying starting at $1 per 100 views or more if we buy your content. But wait, they're even telling you what to say here. Simply perfect. I wear every day and gives me a healthy glow. Five stars. They're leading you into what they want to hear so that way they make money and you make money. So if you're seeing all of these ridiculously overly positive reviews, remember this. And remember, there's also something called reverse marketing which means you give a negative review and it makes it so controversial that you also get paid for it. So my negative review that I posted yesterday is 100% authentic. Like I said, could have lied straight to your face, but I didn't. I took no money from the company. I refused to take money from the company and it's going back. So I'm saying to all the influencers that want to be the change in the beauty community, 
be the change in the community by being honest it's not that hard it didn't really specify on there that you have to say it's an ad it didn't say like oh make sure it's you know it says hashtag ad unless you go into like further terms and conditions i don't want to be sued by bobby brown it just wasn't obvious on the last page that like make sure you know ftc guidelines yada yada so it just seemed very conv like if someone doesn't really read that and they're just like okay whatever like and they don't put hashtag ad and then bobby brown doesn't check that and they start paying people for undisclosed sponsorships that is an issue. Now I'm wondering how many of these reviews were actual reviews and how many of them were undisclosed sponsorships for Bobby Brown. Now, there's another thing about outrage marketing. You know, Meredith gave it a negative review and Michaela gave it a negative review, but however, everyone else is still buying the foundation. So even though it got negative reviews, people are still inclined to buy it and try it themselves and then post a viral video that they know they'll get paid for. So even bad marketing in this case works because everyone's curious about how it will work. Just like the KVD Good Apple Foundation, right? Like even if you saw really awful reviews, you were like, I need to try it myself. Did Meredith and Michaela get paid for this to stir up drama on TikTok? That is alleged. That is me being like, conspiracy theory, tinfoil hat. Would it be crazy to say that Meredith and Michaela and other big influencers got paid and they were like, say whatever you want, positive, negative, say whatever you want. But actually the negative might be more beneficial because it will stir up the pot and more people will be curious to try it and it will cause this beef and drama and the Bobby Brown replies. And recently I saw Halsey actually go on TikTok and say that her um, label isn't letting her release her album unless she stirs the pot somehow on TikTok. Unless her sound goes viral on TikTok, they're not letting her release the song. put that out the song title because mm -hmm. it would be halsey so good mm -hmm. and they would get the art on tiktok mm -hmm. if you're okay with those things but not announcing the date mm -hmm. then i think that we put that up like honestly i think we put that up like sometime between monday and wednesday whenever they can get the artwork ingested mm -hmm. what i just hate this oh i know I hate it. It sucks. Honestly. Which just goes to show that brands are getting way more smart and savvy with the way they use TikTok to promote, right? So if literal like music labels are telling their big artists, you need to go big on TikTok with this sound or we're not releasing the, the music, how would that be any different for makeup? Make sure the pot is stirred and then we can launch the foundation. Conspiracy theory, tinfoil hat, you know the drill. But I just think it's very interesting how this whole saga played out and this whole drama played out and I would have had a much different opinion if that TikTok hadn't popped up on my For You page about the brand deal. But because it had, I'm like side-eyeing everyone now. I'm like, what's being paid for and what isn't? Anyway, that's it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe with that bell, like, comment for engagement and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.